Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Brownstone. Brownstone Worldwide, that is. I'm Paulette. And I'm a part of Brownstone Worldwide here in the Brownstone Worldwide Studios. And we're here again today for another amazing interview for the November issue of Brownstone Living Magazine. Today, 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 we have one of the members of Arrested Development here with us today, Mr. Razadan, um, artist, extraordinaire, vocalist, singer, um, all around amazing gentleman, drummer, dancer, you name it, he's done it. And he's here to talk to us about hip hop, the life of hip hop, what it has become for him and everything else in between. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and bring up Razadad. We're gonna be having some in-depth conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. How are you? You're muted. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and unmute your mic. Okay. Unmute yourself. I had to unmute it on my side. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Technology. Yeah. So good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So welcome to the Brownstone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come and hang out with us. It's been a long time, brother. It's been a long yeah. time. And uh, this is a blessing. So for those of you all who do not know, I have not seen Razada. When was the last time we physically saw each other? Like we talk, but it's been some years. Let's just put it like um, that. Actually, it's probably was on a t on tour. Mm, wow. That would have been the last time I saw you actually. Yeah. On stage actually, not even like backstage. I know, like <laughs> boom, like one minute you're here, the next minute you're gone and life moves on. But here we are. <clears throat> and we are older, we're wiser, we're in these different places in our lives. And, and a lot has happened with hip hop. And one of the things that I always like to ask all of the folks that I've been interviewing here recently is what was the impact of that moment in time for you? Did you think that what we were doing what was happening with Arrested Development. Did you think that it would turn out to be as historic as it has come to be? Did you consider that when you became a part of the group and, and started touring and hanging out and doing all those things? So it probably sounds like, um, like, uh, you know, a lot of people probably would say, yeah, right, whatever. But yeah, I did know. Mm -hmm. I knew to the, I knew from, um, cause I, I look at it, just, just to follow me here. So the minute I decided in my mind that I wanted to be something, mm -hmm. whatever that was, and it, it was, you know, at the time it was an artist. Yeah. I kind of was like, um, I kind of stayed with myself and followed my older self on that journey. Mm -hmm. So, um, I used to do this thing where, um, when I used to go hang out with my cousins and we'd ride bikes like super far and different stuff like that, I would always think about later being home. Yeah. That was like a practice I had really early on. I would think mm -hmm. about later being home or mm -hmm. what I was going to do when I was home. So I would go be in this day, but I would visually see myself back at my house. So when I got in a band and it started to take wings. I visually saw myself older, being able to talk about it, wow. watching it from a different perspective. And the reason to that too is also because as an artist, you're 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 constantly following people's work. Yeah. From when they're like young, they're like teenagers, when they're like, you know, maybe 10 or 11 years old. And then when you see by the time you see the work, it's like Oh, look at all this stuff that they created. But that was over a, like a, you know, a period of time in their lives from like 10 to 81 or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That timeline in between is your actual work. It's not the the moment you're doing it. That's not just mm -hmm. it. It's like, mm -hmm. it extends it's itself up. so much further, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you knew, and so in your head, you were, 
you were already, you had already lived it. And so you were on the other side. Oh, that's heavy. We could have a whole conversation about that. So people learn, um, okay, here's another way to look at it. Like okay. before I was, before I was in the band, I was an artist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I used to sell pictures to my family. They would buy like my artwork, mm -hmm. get it framed and put it up on their wall. And then you forget about it. You're just like, okay, that was a period when I felt like being an artist. That right. wasn't like that for me. Mm -hmm. I like coming back and then you can see your artwork from like high school on somebody's wall framed. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. telling the story already to me. So I'm thinking yeah. about my career. I'm thinking like at some point I'm going to be the old rocker. Mm -hmm. You know what wow. I'm saying? Like when I, when I can't do this, I'm going to be the old rocker. So I, I, I saw this from an artist's perspective. And so from that perspective, I feel like I've, I've been kind to my older self. <laughs> I love you know, that. You have to be kind to your older self because you'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I like the way that you're looking at that in its perspective. So you, you knew when it was happening, what it was going to be because you had already kind of sort of yeah. lived it, right? So you were on the other side experiencing it. And so the accolades, the Grammys, the music, the Soul Train Music Awards, NAACP Awards and all of these things and, and all of that. And so now here you are. And the non-good times. Got to put and that in there too. What was that again? I'm sorry. And the non-good times. And it all comes times yeah let's yeah, yeah. all of that comes with the, with the territory you know absolutely it does and 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 talking about that because see the truth is is that it was rocky right we're young don't know any better a lot of us don't have you know the support of people in our family or in our circle that understand the music business at all and back then the music industry was so much more, I think, personally, for people that had no idea about it or any support, quite volatile. And so when when we walked into the industry or into, you know, what was happening, um, for me, it was rose colored glass. I was like, oh, wow, this is so cool. So I didn't think like you did. I wish someone had given me that insight. I probably, you know, would would have done or fared better. Right. So in all of that and the good times and the bad times, um, let's talk about the lessons that you learned. What were some of the lessons that you picked up along the way? Well, there's a lot of lessons I'm still learning, but mm -hmm. um, the, the biggest lesson probably is just um, that it's a business. Mm. You know, like it's, um, we're all excited about doing some art or singing some music or putting your soul in, down in some way, shape or form to be viewed by other people, but the reality is it's a business. Yeah. And you know, you start to see very quickly it's a business when it starts take shape taking shape in in different ways that could be to your advantage or to your non-advantage. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, everybody, if you know business and you're willing to learn business, you'll realize, oh, that was business move. Or this yeah. is business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The creative side that just comes to you naturally if yeah. you're creative. You know, most people, like we're all creatives, but some some part of that um, being able to articulate head to eye, head to arm, head to leg, being able to, you know, pull pull a a, a A1 performance off whenever you need it, that might just come easy to you. But yeah. the business side might be a whole nother side. and. When you start thinking about it from a business aspect, that's why you see certain people make it, certain people don't. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, you learn it later and you realize, oh, I could become a better, if I become a better business person, I'm, I'm gonna survive this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I just be, just stay creative, then I'm gonna be the dopest artist, that's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can see, you can see through the times now that like, um, we've taught a lot of like, the uh, newer generation, how to do business now. So they're all about getting their money. Whereas for right. us, it was a little bit harder to get our money. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I, I often think of in terms of lessons I learned is that it's um, because it's a business, You um, we created this business. And when you're mm -hmm. creating something, it has a potential to 
uh, be successful or not successful, but there's a lot of like parts that constantly getting developed as you go along, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Like when we look at hip hop now, we see, we see this monster, we see this brand, but it wasn't always that. It was like, while it was being thought about, we were the process of being, mm -hmm. we were helping to put things in place that could later be beneficial to our older selves. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Um, and that's how I got to that. It's like, okay, you know, stuff didn't work out totally the way I wanted it to in the beginning, but I don't, I appreciate this time now more than ever because mm -hmm. all of the tools I feel like I need to be successful, I have. I you know what that. I'm saying? And yeah. now I know how it works too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I probably can benefit now more than I could back then. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because then I was learning still. Now I'm not, now I'm a little more, I'm, you know, a lot more mature where I can actually appreciate it. And I could appreciate it with, you know, family, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And so forth. I love that. So, so in all of this learning and the things that you have picked up along the way, um, you are not just Razadon from Arrested Development. And that's the beauty of it. So like a lot of people don't know that you are an artist, like for real, for real. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. What do you do um, right now? What are some of the things that you're working on right now and focusing on? Okay, so right now what I'm working on is um, is a, a, a project. It's called Profit Heart. Mm -hmm. At least it's, um, it's an art, art over dialogue. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I'll come back to that, but... Um, sure. And um, what I do though, what I do is um, I help to rebrand like uh, corporate and um, entertainment um, mm -hmm. branding. Done, yeah. I've done stuff like um, to help rebrand uh, uh, Fela Kuti when they brought it to Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, Knitting Factory, which is an older, older, club brand they have like mm -hmm. multiple clubs they got they had one in hollywood i'm not sure if it's still there uh spokane new york mm -hmm. um bringing a lot of like that old um uh like you know if you, you see the older posters from back in the day mm -hmm. i help to um bring some of those posters to digital okay. where they can like we you know it's recreated to be on like uh I don't know, brochures and, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and t-shirts and, and other items that could be sold, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, do, I work a lot in the branding yeah. and, um, you know, branding, animation and the, all of it is, um, is in my backyard, you know, AI, that's my newest thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty much it. Like, but this, again, coming back uh, full circle to, um, the profit heart piece that I'm doing is um, it was my dedication to um, it's kind of like a dedication to hip hop, but for me, it's um, I think about like ancestral or where we come from, yeah, and where we are now, mm -hmm. and I'm combining those two together because mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. art, it's hard to be like you can't be but so loud in art, you know yeah. what I mean? Kanye said it one time, it's like. Art is quiet. It's mm -hmm. you can be loud with it, but it's quiet for the most part. And so, what right. I've decided to do is take my performance side as an artist mm -hmm. and marry it with my um, uh, my visual side. Yeah. So normally, when you see an artist, they're just kind of like quiet, laid back, and you see they work. Mm -hmm. But since I'm a performing artist. I'm a little bit more um, Salvador Dali, yeah, uh, Matisse in your face right. kind of art. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. Okay, so when you're when you're talking about all of these things, I'm hearing that your experience, and so this is just me seeing visually as you're talking and you're flowing into what you're doing now, the experience that you had as one of the members of Arrested Development has has kind of helped you 
to see or to transition yourself from experience and so forth into what you're currently doing now, even though you were an artist before, right? right. And I've seen your work and it's amazing. And so um, over the years, what you've done is you've done what most hip hop artists or artists overall have had to do. And it's a conversation that I've had with a, a several folks about how the payment system in hip hop or just the music industry in general has changed because everything is digitized, because you've got Spotify and all of these others that are paying you 0. 0.00000 to the nth degree, one cent of you know your, your participation on a song or whatever, and no matter that it's getting trillions or billions of listens or whatever per month or whatever, by the time you get your royalty check, it's not what it used to be. And so what I'm learning from other artists is that um, having an additional skill is always a blessing and to be able to grow with that. And so you've taken being a going into branding and taking your artwork and, and letting it work for you, I think is definitely, definitely something to be applauded because most folks, unfortunately, end up broken destitute when the lights go down. And so, so oh. can I say something? Go ahead. The, the the newer artists uh, the newer artists have learned this they've mm -hmm. learned this technique so again remember we're in so one one thing I like to to interject and say is that we have to in hip hop or as artists as performers and, and visual artists and performing artists we have to interject ourselves in a different place in this thing. And the way we were initially taught was like hey I'm a performance art, artist I rap I I sing or whatever. I just want to. I want to be get on, and somebody's gonna do my hair, and they're gonna do all of this stuff, right? Later on, when you find out it's a business, and you learn how to keep, you know, monetize yourself and put yourself in in a a continuous format that you can mm -hmm. keep seeing the benefits from this thing mm -hmm. while it's developing, yeah. is you are a brand. We all are a brand. Once you're in front of somebody a multiple of times, and you're People are paying to see you or buying something from you. You, uh, you've you turned yourself into a brand. Absolutely. And so while while the streaming and all that stuff is like coming together, and you know, it's not doing what it's it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of um, a lot of it is still new. Yeah. And um, because it's new, we're getting to see um, we're getting to see how it's developed. In a in a way that's beneficial, and in a way it's not beneficial. But I think um, I think if we stay on top of it, it's gonna it's gonna get better because we're gonna make sure it gets better. The other thing is, um, you realize I realize at least with the streaming is that it's um, it's a system now that like, so you can't look at your past for your revenue mm. because the way that the the way that the um, the streaming works is like. It's a machine, mm -hmm. you know. So you you constantly putting the stuff in the machine, and the more stuff you put in the machine, you get a kickback. If mm -hmm. you're waiting for the older stuff, you have to find a way to recreate, re mm -hmm. um, recreate um, a system that pushes that. Right. You know. You understand what I'm saying? So like, okay. an older song is just gonna do what an older song is gonna do, right? And mm -hmm. the way to bump up that older song is to uh, perform it somewhere, right. um, put it in a commercial, mm -hmm. put it in, um, add it with other things that could send it viral. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it becomes yeah. a lot of, um, a lot of hands-on administration work mm -hmm. to actually move this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to artists that all they do is just drop albums and like, why, why are you dropping albums? Like nobody's paying attention to this stuff and, yeah. and how much volume does it have? And the first thing I hear is like, because I get it, is streaming now and I get paid off of these songs, even wow. though they might not be popular. I'm still I'm like, oh, it makes all the sense. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. makes the sense. Like if you're gonna be a writer, you gotta keep writing. You know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. That, it's unfortunate because there's so many artists out there now and, and that doesn't mean anything to me. It could be a million gazillion artists, but right. the thing I know about artists is like a lot of people aren't taking it. There's a lot of mimics, but a lot of people don't have like, they don't understand format. They don't mm -hmm. understand beginning, middle, end. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How to get in there, get out. Like, 
all that stuff matters. It does. Absolutely. And I'm hearing it a lot on some of the new songs that are coming out to literally to the point where I don't want to listen, but I have because I have a 16 year old kid and he's constantly reminding me um, about mother. This is amazing. What do you think of this song? And I'm thinking there's no beginning, there's no middle, there's no end. It's just the same drop over and over and over. And I think you all think that this is good music. So let me ask you this. When did music change? When did hip hop, what happened? How did we end up over here? And the question that I have asked others, um, and I'd love to hear your point on this, is <laughs> when we're talking about this, this hip hop that we're in now, this, I don't, I, I don't know what it is, right? Because we came in, when hip hop was really about this movement, right? Of just, you know, um, uh, community and, and you know, positivity and so forth. And yeah, you had your gangster rappers and stuff like that, but they and then them, themselves had their own community happening. Now, I don't know what's happening. Like you got people over here that, you know, might as well just slide down the pole. I'm not sure. So, so feedback on that number one and how do we and how do you as as a more mature hip-hop artist um support that or not um or or say to these young folks or do we say to these young people tone it down adjust your change so, right so i think i think a couple things happen and this this doesn't, um, this isn't dear our generation. It's like nothing changed. Mm -hmm. and, that, and if you think, if you think about it from an aspect of, so here, here you go. As an artist, um, there's always the, the, the change of periods. There's a blue period. There's a red period. There's a, there's a the dark period. There's, um, there's all these moods that happen. Mm -hmm. um, as an artist. Mm -hmm. And in that mood, you tend to get off the track. So mm -hmm. like, you know, the early days of hip hop, we, we experienced a certain thing and that was the mood at the time. Mm -hmm. And when that mood changed, we also changed, we got off. Right. We probably weren't listening as much, mm -hmm. um, kind of tuned out, maybe mm -hmm. having kids, maybe traveling, maybe going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're in that mood, the mood still continues. Yeah. The, the, you know, art, the art form still continues mm -hmm. to live and go on. It just doesn't always, it's not, um, doesn't always sound the same when you get back mm -hmm. on, you start listening again. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, what is this stuff they're doing now? And it's all different. Right. It's all relevant to the time though. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And see, that's why I say, when we look at it from an artist's perspective, you see it's all relevant. Mm -hmm. um, Either you go with the time or you miss out, right? Mm. Wow. Um, the time is like, as a true creator, you'll always be able to put something in the landscape because you understand life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how I look at it. It's like, so no matter what the what the um, the art form is doing, mm -hmm. I can adapt and adjust myself, find mm -hmm. a piece of it, mm -hmm. and include myself in it. Yeah. You can't. You can't articulate to somebody who only knows how to speak this way right. that you need to change something. Right. That's not going to happen. Yeah. What you have to do is like create what you're creating mm -hmm. and then hopefully it's hot enough where they'll gravitate towards that. Right. When people gravitate towards you, now you can offer something. You can offer your suggestion. You, you may actually get some respect. You know what I'm saying? But that's the only way to approach it. Like I, I, the kids, the, their music is totally different, you know, but oh. it's a communication they understand. Yeah. And so either you're going to be out of the circle, not understanding, or you're going to figure out what the language is and be able to talk to them. Mm. It's, very, it's very simple. But as an artist, we just, you know, it's like, oh, our music sound like this and their music sounds like that. Yeah. You can go and play all of this stuff in one club mm -hmm. and you're going to have all these people like, you know, certain people are going to gravitate to this and mm -hmm. certain people are going to gravitate to that. And as far as the DJ is concerned, that's all he cares about. Right. Make sure right. everybody's good. Oh, yeah. the old people came and danced for this. 
oh, the new kids came to dance for that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They capitalism just wants it all. It doesn't care. No. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's where the business comes in at. So there's so many forms to this that like again for me that I've been able to like train myself and understand it. Mm -hmm. Like um I and I say to like the the more older generation, if you if you, you want to say more mature generation, don't be so connected to it. When I say connected to it, it's like anytime you're connected to anything, it just mm -hmm. this allows you to be able to like see it as it is. Absolutely. When you disconnect from it, right? You might start seeing some beauty in it, some understanding, something relatively that connects with you that mm -hmm. you can like, oh, I could talk to them because I understand this aspect of it. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand um James Brown when he came out. Mm -mm. You know, know, folk thought he was like, you know, mm -hmm. the parents in that generation thought, what is this this quick music you listening to, you know what I, I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. And that makes sense, absolutely. So so you're saying that it's just a sign of the times, it's the flow, it's the ebb, and it is, um, it will change again. And, and we will see that. Um, I believe before I leave this planet, we're absolutely gonna see it again. Now where it's going to swing, I'm not so sure. However, um, I will say this. I'm, I'm going to put my two cents in here. And I will say now there are some times that it's just some things that we just need to learn how to just kind of just watch. Now, I say that because there's an artist that's out right now and she's she's gotten a lot of attention. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not so sure if I'm OK with the account, the amount of attention. But what she's doing is she's making money. So she's come out with this line of lip gloss. Right. And so. I think it's a balance between like what we were talking about earlier with how, um, you know, streaming has taken over and this is how you have to, the things that you have to do to continue to get paid. Right. So she's created this other way of getting paid for herself. And she created this line of lip gloss with the most interesting of names. Um, so interesting. I'm not so sure if I want to repeat some of them. Right. I think so, I, I think I can get it from here. Yeah. Ooh. And so from what I'm understanding, she's performing, uh, she's doing all the things. And and here's a question that I have that I think is important. Um, and as hip hop continues to change and as the music industry itself changes, one of the things that I think is important to note is how creative that we have had to become as artists to generate revenue for ourselves. So um, do you think, number one, of course, it's a very good thing. However, what does that do for you as an artist who has created so many good works over the years and people can listen to it for, listen to it for, you know, 0.000014% or whatever it is, a cent of a cent. How do you continue to drive the efforts that you need in order to continue to generate the streams of income that you need, right? So like this artist has done her thing and then you got some that are going into reality TV and then you got some that are traveling the world to keep the bills paid. What do you say to those of us that are out there that are trying to still figure this thing out now that the lights have gone out for some. Again, uh, you just said it. The, um, the girl, like whoever the girl is, the artist is doing the lipstick. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you think about it now, like you probably can't name an artist that don't have some liquor or some gum or some hat or some sneaker or something. It's right. like Early on, early on, you know, people like Russell Simmons and um, Puffy, you know, with um, Sean John and Fat Farm and all of the brands, they were mm -hmm. showing you early on that it was gonna, it was gonna be more than just music. Yeah. And if, if you if you know hip hop, mm -hmm. the real hip hop is DJ, dancing, yes, MCing, mm -hmm. graffiti. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like all of these elements. And so. When you think about all the elements of hip hop, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're just going to be um, 
putting lyrics over the top of songs. It's gonna mm -hmm. be art over dialogue, like mm -hmm. profit heart. It's gonna be stuff like, um, you know, podcasts. Yes. It's gonna be magazines. It's gonna yeah. be all of these elements that initially we were all involved in, but we just, we weren't the um, the catalyst at the time. And so now people have magazines, now people have soaps, they have, you know, schools, they have all of these different elements and that's still hip hop. Hip hop mm -hmm. is like, you know, um, speak your voice however your voice is trying to translate you just turn that into something that is um mm -hmm. is um that can help you in your community once you find a once you find a um a uh a audience right that's it you know what i'm saying once you find mm -hmm. your audience that's it and so i think that's what we see a lot of it's like how can these artists sell stuff or do these things it's because they found an audience yeah the, um Social media has given all of us a um, the ability to have our own platform mm -hmm. without having to just lock into one thing. Like the raunchiest of raunchy finds the audience. Absolutely. The, um, the the extremist finds the audience. Everybody has an audience, so it's like you just really have to think about how to capitalize on your audience, yeah. and then. And then that those that's your community right there. Yes. It's not the same as being on stage anymore where you have to like travel from city to city. Mm -hmm. It's like now you and I are in, in each other's backyard by really? just being, you know, doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. And so there's all of these ways to approach it. And so ultimately at the end of the day, I say is like, don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like just even on here, you could be anybody. Right. You know what I mean? I can yep. Walk off the camera, come back with a shaved head and some glasses and have a whole different message. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. it's like if you lock all into your your head, you it's going to seem like a short road in the end of it all. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's why you hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm about to retire. Um, it's because they can't think of what else what else to do. Mm -hmm. Artists doesn't retire. Artists die. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like you're just going to keep reinventing yourself in multiple, multiple ways and don't limit yourself for what you can do. Like um, when the pandemic happened, when we were unable to move, I taught myself how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and I also taught myself how to be a tattoo artist. Wow. So it's so, like, you know, studying and taking time and putting the energy into it and you mm -hmm. eventually come up with something, you know, because right. The, uh, the process of success is just consistency. Absolutely. It's not the talent. Yeah, The talent has nothing to do with it. It's like mm -hmm. talent is one thing, but if you're consistent with anything, you'll get, you'll get something. Absolutely. And so I always look at it like that. That's how I look mm -hmm. at it for me. It's like, because at the end of the day, when you, you're not performing anymore, maybe you're not as popular or something is not jumping off. It's like, well, what can I do? Like, what, mm -hmm. who am I? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. who I was before all of this was an artist. Yes. I can make something out of nothing. And, mm -hmm. you know, after a while, I'm going to have your attention with it. Right. Right. I and mean, that's going to be my new thing. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's just pretty much how it goes. And the other thing I was, you know, I say in terms of being an artist is that when we get older, we're in our, um, I call it the, uh, what period? Uh, you know, this is the period where now I get to talk to people, share the knowledge, mm -hmm. um, share my stories, yeah. um, close the doors that they shouldn't go in, and mm. point them to these doors that they should go in. Mm -hmm. This is the, my cathesis, I was, I was trying to say, it's like, um, you know, when you're leaving college and you got to put it all together to make sense of it. This is mm -hmm. this is that for me. And um, as it pertains to hip hop and art, mm -hmm. it's like now I get to talk to people about what I'm doing and who I've become when before I was creating mm -hmm. who I was and what I was mm -hmm. doing, you know. Mm -hmm. OK, OK. And so now speaking of what you are doing, you have Profit Heart. And outside of, of the branding, what is that? Talk about that for us, please. What is Profit Heart? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, um, it's again, um, so the way I grew up was um, my dad's a pastor. Mm -hmm. 
So I grew up being a pe the preacher's kid. Yeah. I never wanted to be a pastor. I'm, you know, nothing I would consider. Um, but I did wind up being um, conscious, you know, um, studying a little five percenter, mm -hmm. studying Rasta, mm -hmm. studying Buddha. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just studying like different things and 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 seeing how they work outside of Christianity. Right. Um, all of those things make up who I am ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I have this um, this inside of me, but then, you know, like some 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 stuff it it won't um, it never related to me because of the way I grew up. Right. So I just kind of stick to what I'm used to and what I know, and mm -hmm. and I kind of put that into the work. I feel like um, as an artist, just me being from an artist perspective, it's a it's it's a little bit of an interesting time, a little dark in a sense, you know? And these are those moments when as artists, we get to speak on it a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything doesn't always feel like how it was perceived. And so mm -hmm. I started using the African mask to cover my face mm -hmm. as a, um, a ritual of protection and also creating wealth and, um, you know, these just these different dynamics. And so right. I started reaching for a different different mask. And so once that that hit me, I um I created a um I created a print mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. I uh, I did a photo shoot. Okay. I did a um I did a t shirt. Mm -hmm. I started creating all of these things around this idea and this concept. And um eventually I'll bring it to the surface. You know, I'm just kind of sharing pieces and parts of it now, but got it, got it. Um, I want people to, what I want them to take from it is like, um, there's a quote that I got from Mans uh, Mansa Musa. Mm -hmm. And he says, we have two, two, um, two brains. One um, we think, and then one we know. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, so it's like, in my younger self, I was thinking a lot. In my older self, I know. Wow. And so because I know, I do. You know what I'm saying? So okay. from that perspective is how I'm, that's pretty much how the show is. It's like those two two sides of ourselves. So there's the mass and the mm -hmm. non-mass. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, and so um, sometimes you're thinking, but a lot of times you know. Yeah. And if you act on it, that's different. Right. But, you know, right. You know. That's amazing. That's heavy. Like I'm now I'm gonna go and find Matsu Musa's sayings and musings and, and hang that up in my office. So yeah, he's like the, one of the richest people and he had like seven hundred billion dollars. He would go through different um towns and just it would change the economy. That's how rich he was. I mean okay. nobody's that rich today. They they try him, but I said seven hundred billion. Yeah, that's insane. That's crazy. Not a million. Billion. Not two billion. Not a hundred billion. Seven hundred billion. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> what couldn't you do with that? Just anything, anything that you wanted, and for whomever. You know what I mean. And so I, I, I adopted that. Like you know, that's the energy I'm bringing to myself. I'm like, yeah. you know, these quotes and this, this, this different. Um, because think about this too, like the wealth that we have right now, yeah. we are so overlooking it. Think about it again. The wealth that you have right now, mm -hmm. you're so overlooked it because in the nineties, we did not have the ability to do this. No. We're still trying to figure out like, you know, when you had to send a master a, a reel of music just to get somebody to do, um, a collab with you, you're talking about these reels that had to transfer with the mailman, yep. ex export to New York, get it there maybe about a week or two weeks. Sometimes it had to go overseas. Mm -hmm. Now we could just get online, create a create, um, it. create a link and actually do the song right here. So the that right there is worth it's priceless. It is. And so when I when uh when things started changing 
immediately you hear everybody go, man, stuff's changed. I don't know how we're going to. I was in a field day. I was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest time for artists right now because mm -hmm. we're no longer have to wait for this third party to be able to right. show what you're capable of doing. That's why the kids are, you see the kids blowing up and you have 21 year old millionaires and billionaires out there is because they've taken the platform in a way that might be annoying to you. Right. And they've made it work for themselves because they have millions of kids that understand the language that is not spoken that we don't understand. And, right. but those people wind up spending, they'll spend, they're the swipe generation. They'll swipe in a minute. Oh, you got a new thing? Swipe. Yep, you got you it. That? You know what yep. I'm saying? Yep. Oh, right. you got some new lipstick? Swipe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're right. Wow, you helped me to get a different perspective today. I'm excited. But we're home, but you know, we're home. Like the, the older generation is somehow like looking and going, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to join that. Why are they talking like that? Right. You know, we got the mute button. We got the leave button. You don't have to stay for any of this. <laughs> no, you can just go like deuces. I'm out. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. So the industry, the world has changed. Hip hop has changed. And the flow of all of it is necessary, I believe. And it's going to keep changing. It is. It's going to keep changing. Right now mm -hmm. we're in a huge change. Mm -hmm. um, let me tell you just... um. I think I feel like I, you know, I always feel like I'm, I've said this stuff before, but just not here. Yeah. But um, when the pandemic happened, that was the largest change that we experienced. Yes. And a lot of us didn't see it as change, maybe, mm -hmm. but it was the largest change in your life that you you've experienced in this time. Right. You experienced a time when everybody that you knew was home at the same time. You don't mm -hmm. know that that time in your life. You don't remember a time like that. Nobody does. We're no. all at home at the same time. We start mm -hmm. to realize like who we were. The minute you have a chance to be quiet, to be with people you think you love or care about mm -hmm. and have to actually sit for some hours with yourself, yeah. a lot of people can't take it. No. They can't take it. Yep. So it shows you like, it shows you that it showed me that, you know, like my groundation and my foundation is is partly rooted in meditation and showed me like wow like okay this is i'm having a i'm having a ball right now just because right. i can sit in front of the computer every day and just create content and yeah. somebody else is going crazy mm -hmm. they can't be in their house for two two minutes right you know what i'm saying so no, some some right. areas worked and i and i just started looking at like an older generation like wow we some people really need to snap out of it. Like right. they, they're they not going to make it. Mm. They're not going to make it if you can't adjust to what's, what's, what's happening. Right. And in this flow and everything that's happening right now, um, people now have that choice because what, what that lockdown did was it changed the, I believe the trajectory of what could have, what, what could have actually been worse globally for a lot of us. And so, um, there's always the good in the middle of the darkness. And so um, we have we have altered how we work. We have altered how we generate our revenue. Um, and now we have the advent of AI. And as you said, now I can create at home on a computer and, and do the things that I want to do. And you have a puppet. And I, I want to know his name. Um, and how we can see more of him because I know that you share him sometimes on your social media and oh yeah 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 so we we talked about your friend I'm gonna call him your friend because he's he wears a cap he's a, he's clearly a brother and so let's talk about him does he have a name yeah his name is actually um neon parks and that was my other um um so I've always um I won't say I've always done puppetry, but I've always been able to like, if I could see it, I can create it mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so I had another um, show that Neon came from and it was the show, um, it was the uh, the Biz Kids. When mm -hmm. I used to work at a Cartoon Network, I was creating this, this show, um, uh, a brother and sister duo. And um, out of that came 
um, neon. So I'd already designed it. And then I just, um, I was like, oh, I could do something with this. Mm -hmm. um, again, during the pandemic time, I was like, wow, I want to create content, but I don't want to be sitting in front of a computer, right. showing myself, talking, doing this. I was like, let me get a puppet. I found a mm -hmm. puppet and I started to um, work with him. And just from all of the things that I do, I was, again, that's where the magic came because I'm, you know, um, I do background, so I'm a background artist. Yeah, I do layout and editing, so I'm mm -hmm. doing the editing. I do production, so all of the elements that I need to, to create a show, I have at my fingertips. And so that's where Neon Parks came from. Initially, he was. Um, uh, I started doing putting putting it together in the studio because it was going to be a a whole cast. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, we had um we had some hiccups mm -hmm. because you know we shouldn't be around each other. So I started to just make it for pretty much for like Instagram, you know, okay. Instagram and fan base. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where Neon Parks came from. And he's, um, he's kind of like my alter ego in the sense mm -hmm. that he has um, famous friends. He's an artist, he's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, he just kind of pops in and pops out. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I like the way that he does that because he's um, and he's he's almost incognito, but he isn't. And he wears his cap and, and kind of does this thing. So or Scully, is that a skull cap that he's wearing? Um, yeah, he's it's a, a um, laid back kind of guy. Real yeah, he's um, he's a, um, again, he's like that. Um, he's kind of like my my young MTV energy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that um, whenever whenever I, I I'm working with him, I always think of MTV like that, like hey, right in your face, kind of like yeah. what's up, twenty one years old, when when stuff you just you just having the time of your life, you clueless yeah. about stuff still, you know. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, tell me about it. Seems like I'm never getting out of that age. But listen, it's, a good um, time. it's always a good time. Listen, got a quick question for you. And I've asked everyone this. First of all, I want to make sure that I got your name right and where people can find you on social media, of course, is Razadon. Is that correct? Did we get it right? Yep. Did we change it? Yep, there you are. You guys, go ahead and follow this brother right here, um, artist extraordinaire Razadon on social media. But then also, I've got a question for you. And I've been asking everyone this question. Razadon, when did you fall in love? with hip hop? Um, let me see if I can remember the date. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually, um, there's a date. There's a date, I don't know if the, it's, um, it probably was in 85, I wanna say like 85. Mm -hmm. 85, 84, 85. Okay. In um, Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. And um, the people that don't know what Trenton is, it's like Trenton is between Philadelphia and New York. Okay. Um, PRT, Poor Righteous Teachers, from where I live at. Okay. Um, Wise. Uh, there's another Wise. He's from Trenton. Mm -hmm. Um. Actually, my man um, that plays uh, with Jay Z, he's mm -hmm. from Trenton. There's a lot of cats from Trenton. Mm -hmm. They just, um, oh, Jay Z was from Trenton too. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, I think I fell in love with hip hop honestly when I heard. Um, wait, let these helicopters go by. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I um, I fell in hip hop when. Um, when uh, Dougie Fresh came out with, um, what was it? Get Fresh Crew. Oh, yeah. Man. That was um, but I used to listen to Mantronics. Mm -hmm. um, dang. Yeah, that was when I fell in love with hip hop when he came out with that. Mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. 
that when he started doing the beatbox, I was like, damn, this is it right here. Right. Before that, before that, I had um I had heard pieces of hip hop. It was mm -hmm. I heard um rock box. My cousin turned me on to rock box one time when you still mm -hmm. played in a jukebox. Yep. Yep. I heard that. I was like, that made me know I was gonna do something in hip hop. I didn't know what it was gonna be, but I knew I was gonna do something. Yeah. When I heard Mantronics, I wanted to produce. Mm. When I heard um, Dougie Fed, Dougie Fresh, I wanted to perform. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was always a fan of um, Kara's One. Kara's One just made me feel like he just made me stay on top of you know, being like, I don't know, just like direct. Right. Like be direct, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now my story with hip hop is kind of interesting because my dad was a pastor. Mm -hmm. So none of these songs would be playing in my house ever. <laughs> ever. Oh my I mean, God. Like, not ever, not ever. They couldn't, be, it wouldn't be accidentally playing in my house. But in the way I lived in New Jersey was like my next door neighbor was, he probably is like 10 years older than me or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and he had all of the, the the boxes, you know, the boom boxes. Right. He, he wore all the gear, everything that was hip hop, he was. Mm -hmm. And so any new song came out, he was already on to it. And he was a, um, he was a DJ, so he, he did like mixtapes, yeah. a real mixtape on the mm -hmm. tape. <laughs> so he 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 would make these tapes, right? And so um I was a very um I was a very uh what's the word? I was very resourceful when I was a kid. Okay. I would figure out ways to get things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like I wouldn't steal or anything. I would like work work, but I was very resourceful. Like I would see it. If I saw it in my head, it was mine. That's it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he would always be like, Hey man, I, um, I'm getting ready to get another box. You want to buy this one? And I'm like, I can't mm -hmm. buy a box from this dude. Like, where am I going to turn this shit in my house? My dad would go crazy. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I was like, no, I can see that. I could, you know, I should have a box by now. I could play <laughs> light music or something. You know, yeah. it looked like they wanted to bump, but I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Right, I get it. I so, get it. Anyway, I figured out we we did some kind of trade, and I got this box. And um, and the way that it was back in the day is like um, it was easy to have a record player somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, record players were everywhere, and that's how they sold it. Was like a cassette tape and vinyl. Um, I think my first vinyl was actually um, uh, Whitney Houston. So really? it wasn't even it wasn't even hip hop. And I think everything coming out at this time was like Whitney Houston was big. Yep. Um I had um Black Uhuru. Black Uhuru, yep, yep. And I had um uh who else? It was um uh Dougie Fresh. Okay. So I had these three records and I would just be spending these records back and forth, but um I had the mixtapes and everything, and when um, mm -hmm. DJ Red Alert was coming on the radio, I could I could tune in late at night and hear him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia, I could tune in and hear that stuff. I could hear mm -hmm. all of these stations, and so I was just building my hip hop like that. I didn't never think that I would actually be in hip hop until mm -hmm. I know that was very long winded, but it's okay. the day I fell in hip hop was when um, Crush Groove came out. Yeah, that wrapped it up. Because it was like it was like I could see how I could be in it. Okay, I understand that part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Crush Groove. What a movie! And it and sure. it was so. Looking back on it now, I hate to say it, it was corny. It was a corny movie, at least to me back then. But I understood what it was trying to do. Then what was it? It was also Beach Street, Break In, all of those movies that were coming out, trying to capitalize and and bring other cultures into who we were as a people. Um, so B Street solidified me as a graffiti artist. Ah, now that I absolutely can see. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, just that was just a much more quieter life in those days. We didn't talk about that part. Okay, yeah, yeah, but you're an artist, you're a graffiti artist. And- Yeah, and, it wasn't, it wasn't, 
that wasn't when you could talk about being a graffiti artist is no, what i'm saying like, it's not no you can it's like um if you're doing it which i was you just kind of was quiet with it you right. didn't really you know what i'm saying you don't really talk about mm -hmm. and that was just another part of the um the hip hop but that that part of hip hop is really that's how i actually got into hip hop as a graffiti artist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to my you know, from from my perspective, and later on, people heard me in the band. They would that would have been the first time they heard me doing that. But right, um, when you say what inspired me, I'm like I I think about it now. All of the stuff you don't think about, there's nothing that's is contributing to who you are. It's right. like I would if there was an MC, yeah, um, a hot MC, and they were going to battle somewhere. I mm -hmm. would most times show up at that battle. Mm. I wasn't gonna do any MCM, but I just wanted to hear who was hot. So right. I always knew where these battles were and I followed these battles. I would show mm -hmm. up just cause you know, you're like, oh, he's dope. I wanna see if he go against this dude. And it would be kind of bubbling on the, mm -hmm. in the hood and around mm -hmm. areas. And then you're mm -hmm. like, oh, they're gonna be over here. So you show up to, at this battle, no advertisement, nothing. And I would, I would kind of follow the artist that way, right? you know? That's crazy. And now here you have the advent of social media and 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 being able to, like you said, uh, being able to connect where we didn't have to drive and meet each other and stuff like that to do this interview, this podcast. And here we are um, with all of this technology. So honestly, if someone really, really wanted to get into hip hop and get into music and, and capitalize on all of the things that I've been talking with all of you all about, um, from merch to to creating your own brands or like you said, liquor or gum or shoes or clothing or whatever. Now is as good as time as any to actually make that happen for yourself. And you really honestly don't have to go through a record label to do it. It would be great if you could get that support. Right. But from what I'm hearing from everyone is this is a good time and it doesn't matter really your age because art doesn't even look at that. It's just, you know, the quality of the individual itself and what you're bringing to the table, so. Yeah, you gotta be able to do, um, um, follow directions. <laughs> okay. um, that part, yeah. Just think of it, I always say the easiest way, I won't say the easiest way, but um, the beginning, the middle and the end. Mm. And so everything, there's a beginning and a middle and an end. So with all of these formats and, and ways to get in it, you got to figure out what you want to do. Yep. Um, by the time you figure out what you want to do, you're in the middle. That is the middle. So there, you don't have to worry about the middle. And then you got to figure out, like, how am I going to get out of this? And what do I want to do with it? Because in this, this age, everything escalates very fast. It's one minute to just be doing something yeah. and the next minute have too much of it. Mm, come on. Right? You're right. And so when you have too much of it, you have to you have to think of an exit. And with all of the, the ideas, that's the way I think about ideas. It's like from Neon Parks to uh Prophet Heart to Granola Brown, mm -hmm. um, different things and that I've worked on. It's like, how do I close this? How do I Ultimately, yeah. I'm making this so that I can sell it to somebody. Ultimately, right. I'm making this so that right. somebody will listen to it. Ultimately, mm -hmm. I want to do this with it. And so that's how I think about the stuff that I'm doing. It's like, oh, it's taking you a long time to do such and such. I'm like, there's so many different parts and I'm doing all the parts. So mm -hmm. I can wait for, you know, the final of what it brings back to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, the way that I've worked in my life with the rest of development and other projects is what is giving me the um, the content to be able to share for these interviews. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, the content for my life. So I don't look at it and go, oh, I made a mistake and this was a good time and that was a bad time. The times are still going, you know? Right. Like, it's just, what are you gonna do now? Like you're in a position now where you can have the knowledge of what not to do and what right. to do. Exactly. What are you going to do? Yep. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So at the end, it's like, what are you going to do? And that that's where I think, you know, that's where I am now. So it's like, um, 
I feel like, well, we're in no about to be in November, which is uh, Scorpio Sag season for me. Um, so I feel like I feel like it's a good time. I feel like it's a good time. I think in um, I feel like it's a good time, just for me. I mean, it's a, it's um somewhat of an interesting time globally, mm -hmm. but just for me personally, right. In these moments, I won't say I shine, but there is some some clarity that that sparks me as an artist. Okay. It's like, well, what can I say to all of this stuff that I'm feeling? without going under, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what can I do? And then, you know, as an artist and a creative, you start writing, you start painting, right. you start right. you start doing something. Just mm -hmm. don't, just don't be, um, just don't be, uh, what's the word? You know, either you building or you destroying, just don't destroy mm -hmm. anything, continue okay. to build, like, you yeah. know. Absolutely, ooh, this was so good. Man, I could sit here and talk to you all day, but our hour is almost up. So listen, <laughs> Rosadon, thank you so much for taking some time to come and hang out with us here in the Brownstone today. We do appreciate you. Um, listen, stick around for about three minutes after we wrap this up. I definitely want to chat, chat with you for a, a hot second. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and put this back up here where people can find you on social media at Rosadon. And uh, guys, go ahead and follow him as as he yeah as he as he continues to share more um, of his artwork and things like that that he's doing most definitely. And we know we're going to see you all over the place um, as we always do. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, say thank you again to this gentleman right here. This is Razadon himself. Yes, love the photos. Listen, if you want a copy of this upcoming issue of Brownstone Living Magazine. Razadon is in the issue. Ishii is in the issue. We've got Speech. We've got, um, let's see, Cool DJ Red Alert and the original Violators. we got so many other artists that are a part nice. of this particular issue. I'm so excited and honored that you would take time out to hang out with me here in the Brownstone. I could go on and on, but stick around. You guys, thank you for hanging out with us here, myself and Razadon from Arrested Development and the brownstone where you can get all the news and information that you can use cityscape radio where you can listen to the podcasters and the air personalities from our network as well as brownstone living magazine listen there's more coming your way for the anniversary of brownstone living magazine as well get ready for that until then we'll see you around yeah, yeah.